let's put both the ISLM, IS and LM curves together. I'll start down here. You've got three panels. Every time we set this up, we're going to do three panels. You're familiar with this one already. This is the AE model. Okay, They call it the goods market, and they label this Z when they draw it on here. But we're going to call it the AE model. We know it's got AE on this axis. It's got GDP. We also call GDP Y. This just reminds us that GDP is our income. Y stands for income. we got that on this axis. This is what we're getting out of this panel is we're taking this information on GDP and we're putting it up there. That axis is the same as that axis. Over here we got the market for money. So we got the supply and demand for money and here we have the quantity of money but we're not too uh, concerned about that. This is what we want out of this market. We want to know what the interest rate is because that axis informs that axis. That's the same as that. So we take this information and put it over here and we take this information and put it over here and we find out what combination of interest and GDP satisfies both of these? And that's when we get this thing called dual equilibria. Dual equilibria. Dual equilibria. Okay. Now I'll put a couple of rules on here because these rules are important and we'll go over them in class, but I'll um, do them now as well. When Y goes up, then we demand more money. And when Y goes down, then we demand less money. That's not a tough sell, right? And then two other rules. That's really one rule, a combination. But the other one is when I goes up, then investment goes down. We know that already. When I goes down, then investment goes up. And investment is part of the AE model, right? C plus I plus G plus an X. So with that, these are our rules. Right? This is what I'm going to call our rules rules, you'll see that on the homeworks and the handouts. Those are the rules, so you'll get familiar with those, and that's how we bounce between these two models. So let's start start out here with the AE model. So we got an AE, maybe it's at that level, AE1. So call Y, Y1, and then therefore we have Y1 right there, and then so AE assumes that we have an interest rate, because investment is one of the components of AE, right? C plus I plus G plus and x maybe i equals 5%. So let's find 5% on here and then y1 and that's that point right there. Okay? If something were to happen and then interest rates were to go up, well then when interest rates went up, then investment would go down and ae would drop. So ae goes from here to here and we go maybe to ae2 and this assumes that i equals 10%. Let's assume that. So if interest is 10%, then we'd be at Y2, and let's call that Y2, which is right there, and then 10%, so that would give us that point right there. And then you're starting to see the downward slope take shape for the um, IS curve. It's got a downward slope on it, all right? I'm gonna stop right there, and I'll flip over to the market for money, and we'll start with a downward sloping or perfectly inelastic money supply curve. Right, whatever level of government wants, that's how much money's floating around. The government gets to pick that, and then a downward sloping money demand curve. And so now we have an uh, interest rate that satisfies this. And so if Y1, let's call this 5%, since it lines up with 5%, okay? But this assumes money demand, assumes that Y equals something. Well, let's call it Y1. So if that's GDP, that's your income, maybe that's $100 billion or $200 billion, $200 billion, then this is going to be money demand. So at Y1, $200 billion, 5% is going to be the number, and that's that number right there. Let's change this. Let's say we go from Y1 to Y3. Y3 is $400 billion. We know if Y goes up, MD is going to go up. So let's increase this here, and this is going to be MD if Y equals Y3. I'll put Y3 on here just for reference. Y3. So then we get an interest rate that's higher. Let's call that 8%. So if at Y3 we have 8%. Okay. Uh, so there's our two points for LM. So now we're starting to see the upper slope develop. Let's add one more set of lines just to make sure that we can um, ensure these slopes are going the right direction. Let's say we get Y3, uh, let's get it right at Y3 somehow. So interest rates aren't 5%, they aren't 10%, let's call interest rates 1%. So if interest rates are 1%, then AE would really accelerate and we'd get out here and do this in another color because it's getting crowded. So that would give us Y3, and which is this Y3 
and this is 1%, right? And at 1%, we'd arrive at that point. Now we have our three points for ISLM, for IS at least, and that's our IS curve. And then if Y3, then we'll go to Y2. If income is Y2, that's really low, right? This is Y1, and this is Y3. Let me put my parentheses on there. What if income is Y2? That's much lower than Y1. Well, then we would arrive at a money demand curve here, MD. If Y equals Y2, that's really low. And interest rates would be low. I'll call this 1% just to line up with the other one. And then from there, we would see at Y2, well, we'd have a 1% interest rate would satisfy this market. So then, geez, I'm going to have to cheat just a little bit and move this point down. But we get an LM curve that looks like that. Okay, so this is what we've been after with this whole module was figure out a couple points in the goods market where AE and GEP are in equilibrium given an interest rate and the interest rates on this axis and then a couple of points in the market for money where money demand given a couple of different incomes gives us equilibrium interest rates and then we plot all that information over here and then we find this particular point and this is called dual equilibria. It is the combination, maybe that's 5% and maybe that's Y1, it is the combination of interest rates and GDP that leave both the goods market and the market for money in equilibrium at the same time. And if you don't have that, if one of those two is out of whack, well then you're going to get some changes. So for example, if this is not in equilibrium, the interest rate is going to change. Well, if interest rate changes, that's going to affect investment and move this around. Or conversely, if this isn't in equilibrium, then GDP is going to change. It's going to move towards a 45 degree line. But when GDP changes, then our income changes, and that means money demand changes, and that's going to knock the interest rate around. It's only at this combination where you see IS and LM intersect where you have stability in both of these markets at the same time.